This video is the fifth in a series analyzing historic Formula 1 cars using CFD. Whilst the McLaren MP44 was dominating the 1988 season, there was a story of a small team that sometimes could, which is opposed to the larger teams that mostly couldn't. The March 88 one was the first Formula 1 car designed by then technical director Adrian Newey. It was aerodynamically creative and generally more sophisticated than the McLaren. Breaking away from the simple single function components, it coupled the front wing to the nose and integrated the rear surfaces. The performance of the car was such that it was thought by some to be the fastest naturally aspirated car. There weren't many occasions when the McLaren didn't appear to be the fastest car on track. But round 13 in Estrial, Capelli passed Senna on track for second and then proceeded to gain on Prost, reducing the gap down to 2 seconds only to fade in the later stages. With the aerodynamic forces rising with the square of speed, high performing aero cars should display higher cornering speeds in high speed corners. These clips you can see that the Miami Blue March is quicker through the fast corner too. In Japan, it officially led one lap. It would have been interesting if the British Grand Prix was dry with high speed corners and the fuel restrictions of the turbo McLarens. The stated design parameters Nui was working with was the engine, fuel tank and driver, conforming the chassis and body around these. In the end, the driver was uncomfortable suffering from cramps at the end of the race. It may have been the reason why Capelli didn't win in Portugal. However, I didn't find the reference I thought I remembered, but it is correct that the drivers were suffering cramps in the later stages of races. Benchmarking the McLaren MP4 with a previous video, Newey required the aerodynamics to make downforce more efficiently. So the large, simple and effective front wings needed to be at least less draggy. The body and floor needed to be exploited as the most effective device and thus needs to produce more negative lift. The overall design objective Newey stated was that the lift to drag ratio was to be at least 3 and this was achieved. Thus the March 88 one design had three particular aspects that were performance improvements. Each of these will be analysed in this video. These were the front wing and nose integrations where the wing's lower profile reached across its width. It increases downforce as the nose has an underside wing profile, but structurally it is also now one piece. The front wing end plates extend back inside the tyres to help reduce their impact, particularly from steering inputs. The diffuser was unique for the 1988 season. It forms a large exit for the floor and had side tunnels to capture a vortex. In addition, the rear of the car was generally well integrated. The experiment. This part of the video will start with the experimental context and overview of the data that will be available for this analysis. This includes the simulation models and overview of the results. Then the analysis will cover the front of the car with attention paid to the wing and nose. There will be important interactions between the front wing and wheels that will be highlighted. Lastly, the floor and rear of the car with a focus on the diffuser. This is the most important area of the car and will be treated as such. This experiment revisits the MP42 and the MP44 to compare these with the March 88 one. These simulations were run to assess the design characteristics by sectioning the front and rear wing and nose. Each of these sections have the lift and drag forces extracted. These can be then assessed relative to the total drag and downforce numbers. From here, the airflow characteristics will then be analyzed using streamlines, plots, and field plane slices. Two cases for the March 88 one were run at two degrees of rake and at two different ride heights, 21 and 26 millimeters. The MP42 and the MP44 were rerun at the lowest ride height, 30 millimeters and 21 millimeters with rake, this time with their noses sectioned. The March 88 one ran a number of different aerodynamic configurations front and rear. The chosen configuration used the front wing with a slot gap and two elements and a full length profile at the end. It seems like this was used for higher downforce tracks and tended to be paired with a large rear wing. Similar to previous experiments, a medium rear wing profile was used here. The maximum downforce total of the March 88 one was at 21 millimeters and was 3,933 newtons, with only 1,202 newtons of drag. This surpasses the design objective lift to drag ratio of 3 with 3.27. At a slightly higher ride height of 2.6, this drops to 2.99, and this is without the simulations fully converging. To put this in perspective, the McLaren MP44 had 385 newtons less downforce and a ratio of 2.46.
Most of the 88 ones negative lift came from the floor with 1,784 newtons. That is 45% of the total. Since the nose is now integrated with the front wing, it is sectioned, so all the downforce is a result of the floor and diffuser interaction. To understand how much better the floor diffuser configuration is, both the McLaren MP44 and the MP42 were rerun with their noses sectioned. The nose wing configuration of the 88 one produced significant amounts of downforce with 1464 newtons and 100 newtons of drag at 21 millimeters. The wings themselves contributed 1215 newtons lift and 68 newtons drag, which meant the nose made 240 newtons lift and 34 newtons of drag. Compare this with the MP44 nose with 187 newtons lift and 3 newtons of drag. Then the MP42. 375 newtons of lift and 36 newtons of drag. As a result, the numbers for the downforce from the floor are significantly changed. I was guessing 140 newtons for the MP42 in the nose in the previous video, but I was off by more than a half. Here a pressure map of all four models is a nice overview of the simulations. Considering that the 88 one at 21mm produced 40% more downforce from the floor than the MP44, it isn't super obvious where that came from. The pressure profile is different and there aren't high pressure bubbles at the side. The walk shear stress maps however are much more different with generally higher values for the 88 one. The performance of the 88 one at 21 mm is drawing much more air in from the middle of the floor. The color discontinuity at the side pod's leading edge is a meshing problem, seeding a little more turbulence than otherwise. Similarly, but this time a lack of a fillet at the MP42 creates a separation bubble indicated by the purple. But the general characteristics of the floor can be seen here. Taking a pressure plot along the longitudinal axis of the car is a little bit more specific. It looks at the pressure numbers rather than a big picture pressure map. The length of the cars are slightly different, so the front wing low pressure trough is a little further back. But as the MP42 and MP44 nose is part of the floor, the low pressure is a product of the air accelerating off an earlier stagnation point, rather than under a wing profile. A discontinuity is seen with the 88 one as the body integrates into the floor. Later with the 88 one, the pressure drops earlier, though the trough isn't much different between the last three models. Taking a pressure map sliced down the center line of the car shows the high air pressure behind the nose on the floor is further back and the gradient green to blue is sharper. The volume of low pressure seems to be interacting more with the ground, though only slightly. An additional design improvement for the front wing and nose, the end plates were extended back past beside the front wheels. The stated idea was to lessen the impact the steering of the front wheels had on the wing. With the unsteered wheels, the more disturbed air seems to be further out from the chassis. The vortices of the front wing end plates can be seen both in the X movies and through the line of streamlines seated near the lower edge. Particularly obvious with the streamlines, the vortices that have been previously pushed inwards to impact the side pods are now, now diverted behind the wheels. So now the body isn't blocking these vortices. Some of the additional downforce could be a result. With the previous experiment, the MP44 run flat at 30mm, the boundary layer blocks the air, taking 150 newtons off the front wing. A couple of plots gives an indication of what the flow looks like as it passes behind the front wheels at 1cm above the ground. These pressure plots are taken to illustrate how the air falls off the front of the car and how it is going to impact the rest. A vortical structure can be identified bounded by the peaks and troughs. It is much stronger with both the 88 one plots. Focusing on the MP44 and 88 one's pressure plots, it captures the vortex off the MP44 closer to the body and in addition to the body being wider. The X velocity plot captures the air moving up and down. Where the MP42 didn't have a vorticity represented in the pressure plot, it is here, and it is in a similar place to the MP44. They are closer to the body and there is less down velocity reinforcing the notion that they are weaker. Even though this isn't showing anything new, we have seen this with the streamlines, but it gives another way of looking at the problem. The main story of this car is the floor and diffuser. The air entering the floor is better, 
but the downforce created is all about the exit. The lower beam wing has been in common use since 1986, and it is mostly used to extract air from the diffuser. This is its purpose here. With ground effects starting to re-emerge, I could safely say that the March 88 one exploited this aspect best for 1988. As the floor is flat between the front and rear wheels, accelerating the air from under the floor to create ground effects is all done with the diffuser. Looking at the pressure plot from under the car again, air is accelerating much earlier than the MP44. The difference is the diffuser, as the rake and ride height are identical. Looking at the bottom of all four simulations together, the 88.1 at 21mm in the top left produces the most amount of downforce. Visually it is bluer than the rest, and both the 88.1s show a different pressure characteristic. Even the ride height set at 26mm, downforce is higher. Shown in a plot, the 88.1 at the same ride height as the MP4 has 512 newtons more downforce, with 1784 newtons. Surprisingly, the March also has lower drag, especially since the McLaren had an efficiency goal. I guess that was mostly for the engine and its fuel restriction. Overall, the body's lift to drag ratio increased from 3.2 for the MP4 to 5.87 for the March. Another plot taken from the mouth of the diffuser doesn't reflect the pressure distribution on the floor, as the peak low pressure is mostly the same. The 88.1 at 26mm, there is less area underneath the graph than the MP44, even though it has more downforce. However, at 21mm, the middle is performing better. Just a comparison with the longitudinal plot shows not a huge difference results in a large change. A brief and basic explanation is that the increase is a change in order of magnitude because the plot is a 2D slice but is representing a 3D form so the area under the graph can be multiplied again with the width value. I did say basic. Taking a slice through the middle shows that these three cars are very different. An innovation I didn't mention before is the cockpit opening size was minimized on the 88.1 and it seems like there's a benefit. The pressure field in front of the helmet seems to have been reduced significantly. The lower beam wing in this configuration doesn't seem to be more effective than the single large wing. However, looking at the drag for the rear wing, the MP44 produces 1292 newtons of lift and 349 newtons of drag, whereas the 88.1 at 21mm has 908 newtons of lift and 243 newtons of drag. The lift to drag ratio is 3.7 and 3.74 respectively, so basically the same. The assumption is that if you remove 400 newtons of lift from the MP44 wing, the pressure field wouldn't be as good as the 88.1. It might be worth noting that the efficiency numbers may be skewed with some convergence problems seen with a rear wing asymmetry. However, we're still looking to see why the diffuser is better, because it is doing something. So we will look at the flow structure in a number of different ways. The shear stress map on the floor gives a few more hints. The plots indicate the floor is working better than both the McLarens. Here the lump where the gearbox is, is likely one of the problems, with the purple low shear stress values indicating that air is slowing here. Though the 88.1 has a purple area, there is symmetrical flow reattachment later on in the diffuser. This indicates a flow structure, not turbulence, but the lack of symmetry suggests that this is marginal. Looking from the back, the stream showed the MP42 is messy, with some structure either side of the gearbox. The MP44 is much better with counter-rotating flows either side of the gearbox. The 88.1 has large counter-rotating flows that aren't separated by the gearbox, but also the side channel of the diffuser forms a flow structure using air from above the floor and in front of the rear wheels. Now from the underside, the MP42 has little structure, but the MP4 has a little bit more in the inner channels. And lastly, the 88.1 has the large intersection working with the outer channels doing something. Lastly, a couple of animations to give an overview of the importance of the underside of the car. The streamlines start from just in front of the front wing and are accelerated. Some of the streams outside the end plates are pulled in and get wrapped up into a vortex. These then continue straight past the wheels. 
passing the wheels they are pulled behind them and out to the side of the car. The air in the middle continues straight and most of the air that is heading for the rear wheels is diverted into the diffuser. The QISO volumes capture the edge of the vortices from the front wing and two counter-rotating vortices in the main diffuser volume. The outer channel section of the diffuser has these strong vortical structures captured. Finally, the x movie of the diffuser. The diffuser is basically working. The air is accelerating all the way through to behind the car. One more video of this car will be made that documents the changing of the diffuser to the 1990s version. This again was a step change in diffuser development. The failed 891 iterative development of this diffuser led to a pushing this concept too far in a wind tunnel that had calibration errors. The March 881 seemed to have marginal performance. But the steady state numerical model used here wouldn't be trusted to deliver a definitive answer on the flow attachment problems. But overall, this experiment shows that the March 881 designed by Adrian Newey is a step change in aerodynamic development.